to today's show, Donald Watts, uh, the College Prospect Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about uh, some of the things, uh, for me, some of the some of the dark things involved in uh, the college, not recruiting process, but the the goal, the objective of being a college prospect and some of the traps, subtle traps uh, to watch out for. I'm in the gym constantly with kids um, who have the goal, who have the dream. And one of the things that I really try to do is be very clear about where they're at, um, what their goals are, and what it's going to take in order to accomplish those goals and dreams. I, I intentionally don't tell a kid that, hey, you can't do this. Uh, I try to say, hey, if, if you want to get this done, this is what it's going to take. Are you really willing to put in and ready to put in uh, that kind of work? So just being real with them. But before I get into the show and into the traps and things like that, let me remind you the show is brought to you by Watts Basketball, wattsbasketball.com, Game Changers for Life. Uh, join us and we can help you take your game to the next level. And also by the Watts Foundation, the wattsfoundation.org. Uh, interested in supporting a, a kid, a player, uh, and his dreams and goals that couldn't afford uh, training, travel, those kind of things that, that, uh, that it takes in order to accomplish the goal and interested in supporting a kid in need, uh, head over to the wattsfoundation.org where you can make a donation that will make a significant impact on the life of somebody in need. All right, so there's that. Now let's get to the show. Um, I was in the gym this week and, and, and uh, really with some, some talented uh, middle school players. Uh, and for me, um, if, if you have the goal and objective, if your son or daughter has the goal and objective of being a college basketball player, you should really focus on the activities that you're doing uh, in middle school. And, and, and what I say that, I'll say this, my father really gave me an advantage <clears throat> and I tried to do the same thing for my kids of preparing, giving me everything I needed skill-wise, knowledge-wise, understanding-wise to be successful as a dominant impact varsity basketball player, varsity dominant high school basketball player in middle school. Now, if you can have all the tools, but then you might not have the physicality, but that'll come. And so you, you know that. So during that middle school time, really critical for a player who wants to play at the next level to really focus on doing what it takes to be the all-state type high school basketball player um, and putting that work in there. And I'll tell you why that's critically important and then tell you the traps that, that to watch out for. Is it's critically important because when you get to high school, so much of your time is on – other people's agendas, the high school coach's agenda. You know, you got to carve out your role. You got to show up to things you got to do. So middle school for a high level basketball player is really the, the time where you're going to have the most time to spend developing your game, your individual skill set, and starting to lay the foundation for developing translatable skill sets, not only to high school, but to college. Um, when you get to high school, you have all of those traits to be a dominant impact varsity player. And in high school, with the time that you have, because your foundation is laid, it's just a matter of time for you to develop physically and to step into your role. Then you can focus on, in the time that you have, developing college translatable skill sets. All right? So that's the kind of the pathway, like how you lay it out. Now, here are some things to, to really watch out for. People are lying to players. They're lying to kids about what it is, uh, how good they are, um, where they're at. Uh, there's, a, I think, a $15 billion youth sports, youth basketball industry or whatever it is that – um, and you can check my numbers. I, I haven't looked at it in a while. But 
that are based on players who want to play at the next level and people who get paid to, and I'm one of them, who get paid to um, help them or tell them that they're on the way. I'm not one of those. I, I help I help players understand what it takes to make it happen, and then they can go do it themselves, or uh, they can have me as a mentor throughout this process. Families can have me as a mentor throughout this process. Let me be very clear about that. Um, but there's a huge industry that's dependent on keeping kids going for the goal, whether the goal is attainable for them or not. And, and the problem that I have is that kids are being told they're good. So one of the one of the biggest lies, and I don't not you know anyone specifically responsible, is um, how good they are in middle school. Uh, it's so easy to say, oh, you won, oh, you lost, oh, you're this, oh, you ranked this, oh, you ranked that. But in middle school, everybody doesn't develop at the same rate. So often what happens is, is players are being told that they're really good. They're being gassed up. They're being fueled that they're really good, whether they are or aren't. And so one of the questions that I ask my players, and I'm asking you and asking you to ask uh, your son or daughter is, do you really want to be good at basketball or do you want to be told you're good because you're better than somebody else who's no good? And so much of our industry, and that, that sounds harsh, but so much of our, our industry, we're comparing players and in middle school, you can compare yourself and be ranked or highly touted because you've developed physically faster. But in the actual skill set, the mindset, the, the, the things that it takes to be good long term can be undermined or being undermined by that very desire to be ranked desire for approval. I also told my kids this, that, that we're in the gym. I want you to feel great about what you accomplished today, tomorrow. I want you to feel great about what you get done in the gym when you're in the gym by yourself and nobody else is around. I don't want you to feel good because somebody retweeted it, liked it because you have followers, because you have, because those things undermine the craft. Being good and you can get great at basketball in middle school and it cannot translate into one victory. It cannot translate into making one AAU team and you could be great. You could have a great skill set. You could be a, a killer shooter. You could be able to finish with your left hand, your right hand, all of that stuff, but be supremely underdeveloped. And when you come up against somebody who is more physically developed, it's going to be hard to get those things off. But those tools are there for you when you develop. So you could be completely unranked, completely off the radar, completely uh, quote unquote, and I don't like a nobody as it is a return as it, in terms of whatever, because you're in the lab getting your work done. You can make 20 left hand layups in a row. You can make 20 right hand layups in a row. You can be 40 out of 50 from 15 feet. You could do all these things. You can have a nice handle. And on the other side of that, you could be a 12 year old who looks like a 15 year old that can't make a left hand layup that can't really even really make a layup. But when he misses it, he can get it back and put it back in. And, and all of these things, I'm trying to, to, to help you understand passionately um, just what I see out here. And you're being told that you're great, but you're not skill wise, skill development. You're, you're not. And so you're being set up to fail. And then on the other side of that, 
that young kid, he cannot get the the results that he's looking for from the work that he's done. And if he doesn't have somebody in his life who continues to encourage him and continues to help him understand that, hey, no, you're on the right path. It's only a matter of time. Things are going to happen for you. It can be discouraging to him. So the industry is lying to kids about what it takes, and they're doing it by comparing people to each other when it's apples to oranges. Different ages develop at different times, but when everybody's developed, where are you going to land? That's what's important, and that's what's critical, and that is today's show. I just wanted to get on here, like, don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for the for the lies. Don't fall for the myths. Put your work in. Develop your craft. Learn to love your development. Establish, establish understand the standards of excellence in basketball. Period. Not excellence in basketball as it compares to other people who really aren't as good as they think they are or people say they are. Keep working, stay working. If you got a dream, go for it. I'm Coach Watts, Watts Basketball. This is the College Prospects pa- uh, College Prospects Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget, hit that like button, subscribe. If you know somebody who needs to hear this messages, pass it along. All right, share the word. Sharing is caring. Peace, love, basketball. I'm out. Oh,